thank you for joining us today. Um, we are very excited to to do this panel together and um, you know hopefully answer some questions they may have or just inspire you to whatever it is that you are interested in doing next uh, related to games. Uh, my name is Marcelo Viana Neto. I'm a professor of game design at Hostos Community College uh, in the Bronx. Uh, host is part of the City University of New York. So if you're not familiar with New York, um, it's a, the largest urban university in the world, um, QNES. So um, we're here with four panelists uh, that will introduce themselves um, in, in, a, in a second. But I just wanted to let you know that while we're um, starting, oh, uh, sorry, while we're uh, doing the panel, if you have any questions, and you want to, or maybe react to something the, the panelists have said, um, you can just type it in chat. Uh, we have uh, Marissa in helping us moderate this. She is going to be um, sharing you know, important questions that you guys bring up. And then if I see something that uh, we should talk about, uh, I'll bring it up and I'll definitely ask the, the panelists too. So don't be shy about asking whatever it is that you're interested in knowing about. After all, this is for you. So, um, so like I said, my name is Marcelo, um, and I am my pronouns are he and him. Um, I am going to be the moderator today. Um, so let's start by introducing ourselves. So first, um, I'm just going to go by um, the order that I see. Uh, so Kira, uh, why don't you go? Why don't you go next? Um, hi everyone. Um, my name is Kira Wills. I'm in stock. Um, any pronouns are okay with me. Um. I went to school for my undergrad at Hunter College, and currently I work at NYU Game Center um, as their Center of Excellence Administrator and Industry Liaison. Uh, Lily. Hi, I'm Lily, and my pronouns are she, her. I study at NYU as a junior. Um, I, I know one other thing you, were, you wrote for like our introductions, like one game that we're currently playing. I just started playing um Persona Five. Oh, that's right. Thanks for reminding me, Lily. Um, yeah. <laughs> so, uh, yeah. So just because I I wrote that intro question, so I I guess I have to say so. I'm I just started playing Pacific Drive, uh, which is a game that just came out. It's like a survivor survival game where you like, uh, it's 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 awesome. So, um, you should check it out. Um, Kira, sorry. Uh, are you what what's one game that you're currently playing that you're excited about? Uh, the, the mantra, the more you work in games, the less games you play, is very true to me. Um, I think I, the last time I actually touched a game um, regularly was a long time ago, but I actually did pull up a game of Civilization V a few days ago. Uh, how about Lewis? Go, you can go next. Uh, my name is Lewis. Um, I did study at Hostos Community College, uh, like Marcelo mentioned previously, for CUNY, and then I'm actually transferred over to New York University to continue my education in game design. And a game I recently played, uh, Gran Turismo 7. I'm a fan of racing simulators. Awesome. Uh, Stephanie? Hi, um, my name is Stephanie Baltadano. Um, I am a recent graduate from Hostos Community College. And I'm currently playing Baldur's Gate 3. So. Uh, the forever game. <laughs> the forever game, yeah. <laughs> awesome. Uh, if you if you have a game you're excited about they're playing right now um, in chat, go for it and shout it out. Um, okay, cool. So uh, the first question that I wanted to ask the panelists is um, kind of like what led you to uh, where you are right now um, in relationship to studying game design or um, or working in the field. Uh, so like a, uh, just can mention, you know, maybe something that inspired you like a moment or a person. Um, yeah, so anybody can take it away. Um, I can go first. Okay, I was, I was about to say Louis. <laughs> <was like, laughs> um, I actually met Marcelo at like a game design summer camp um and but before that I was like more of like a 2D artist and going into high school I started programming and once I got into that summer camp I got introduced to like how to make games like not just like video games but like outdoor games 
and thinking about things like board games, card games, and made me realize how like interesting just like game design as a field is generally. Um, that's kind of how I got into it. Awesome. Uh, Lewis, go for it. Uh, for me, uh, in high school, I always kind of resorted to video games as like as a stress reliever and also um, dealing with like mental health and stuff like that. Video game was always like a safe corner for me. And I never really thought of the possibility of actually working in games up until I kind of had to make the decision of, OK, I'm going to go to college. What do I actually want to do there? And the thing is, I didn't have a portfolio because I had never actually even worked on a game, let alone code or, or anything like that. But I did see um, how accessible um, Hostos was. And I was like, let me just try it out. And I don't regret um, taking that shot. Staff or Kira? Um, yes, yeah, I'll, I'll go next. Um, so when I was looking at all the majors that I could apply to at Hostos, um, I first started out at dental hygiene. And then I realized I don't really like doing this. Um, I have an artistic background. So it was either game design or um, uh, digital animation. Um, and I realized, let me try something new. Um, to me, making games is another form of art. So I just wanted to take a shot at that. And then a couple of years later, here I am <laughs> making games. Awesome. So yeah. when when I was young, um, I, I'd always grown up playing games. Um, my mom likes to tell me the story of how I taught myself how to get onto the internet to the Nick Jr. website when I was three without her helping me. Um, and that I think foreshadowed everything. But um, I started taking game design classes as a middle schooler at Hofstra University. Um, and what led me to that was um, I really enjoyed playing MMOs, but specifically Wizard 101 was like my absolute favorite game when I was younger. Um, and I spent so much time on it that I was like digging up everything on the internet that I could find about it. And I stumbled upon a dev blog. And that's kind of when I realized, oh, being a game designer is a job. Um, and I saw their job listings on their website and I brought it up to my mom like, oh, you know, I think it'd be really cool if I could do that when I'm older. And she Googled and found out that Hofstra had game design classes for kids. And so I took them all the way up until I graduated and started working for them briefly. And so that's how I got here. <laughs> awesome. Uh, so, yeah, so it, it's interesting because, you know, everybody has a different path to to where they are. And I think that that's very common, right? Like, uh, if, if you talk to a hundred different people that are in games, they're going to give you a hundred different answers for this question. Um, so, so games is also a very, very uh, uh, complex and, and multifaceted field, right? So there's a lot of different things that you can do in games. So Steph, you mentioned that you're uh, an artist. So uh, I'd like to, to ask the panelists if they um, have like a particular, you know, uh, the thing that they they really focus on in terms of uh, being involved in games. Um, so if it's art, programming, or writing, or something else. Um, so Steph, why don't you why don't you tell us? Uh, yeah. So um, when you're making a game, there's different types of things that do need art to be made. So there are different types of artists, and uh, I focus mostly on concept art. Um, whether it be for characters or uh, for right now, I'm doing backgrounds most. Um, but there's also um, user interfaces, which is all the buttons that you see, um, like in games. All of that was designed by someone. Um, and uh, there's like a, a more stuff, but I'm not remembering all of that right now. But for, for the most part, you're gonna focus on UI or um, character art, props, um, items, all of that. Yeah. Any anyone else want to tell us about what if you specialize in anything? Um, hard to say if I specialize in anything in particular. I'm still kind of figuring out like what I'm good at and what I'm interested in. But I do find myself leaning more towards design. I like um, and also game feel. So like design, kind of uh, especially level design. Okay, well, how does how should the game uh, function and flow? And kind of like how do you lead your players um, to go where you want them to go? Um, and as far as game feel, if you're playing on an icy level and your character isn't sliding around, that doesn't feel very good for an icy level. Well, you so, can I can, yeah, I can go. Um, so I mainly 
don't work on games, physical games anymore. Um, when I first started college, I thought I wanted to do music composition and sound design for games. And so I started studying that, but I realized how much I enjoy working with people. <laughs> and um, I kind of just did a whole step to the left. And now I mainly do more things like community management or events. Um, so anything that involves the actual like community and people that play games, love games, that sorts of thing. It's huge, right? Like there's a lot of folks that, that work on that side of of games, like the community aspect. Lily, do you have a focus? Yeah, I'm kind of um, a lot like Stephanie. I mainly do like 2D art or um, I'm learning 3D art and then UI UX. But actually really recently I've gotten into like social media marketing and understanding like branding for games. Um, primarily like indie games more so than like AAA company games, but um, yeah. Cool. Um, so it, you all have, um, you're in different stages of studying, you know, Steph just graduated, Kira has um, a, a little bit of a different kind of route to, to where, where they are. Um, do you find that in during this journey of learning about games and game design um, and game development, that it has changed the way that you look at games and relate to them versus uh, when you started and you were just playing them? Um, yeah, I can go. Um, I feel like before I play a game, I realize how big it is like not to get spoiled on things now that like also like people talk about games so much around me studying game design. Um, but I think I've become kind of like obsessed with games where like not just like playing the game, but just learning about like how it was developed is really interesting and what people thought about it when it first released and like how it like became kind of like viral, things like that, that I've gotten really into. So I think like I've started thinking of games as like, not just like as an experience, but just like how it even like existed in the first place is very interesting to me. Um, To add on to Lily, um. I guess originally when I would just play games, it was like, okay, I'm here just for the experience. I'm here to play with my friends. It's fun. It's cool. But now actually making games and being able to appreciate them, not just as like a fun thing, but like just how much work actually goes into making them. And what you think is something so simple, like, and something that's buggy in game, like, oh, this should be easily fixed. In reality, it's like a 10 step process, probably even more. And being able to like analyze games, all different genres, and not just like video games, um, and just appreciating them, appreciating them on that level as forms of art, as forms of entertainment, as forms of like community growing, and yeah, just appreciation for games as a medium in general. Great. Um, and Kira, Steph, you want to add anything, or I, I can move on. I can add um, something. Oh, need go ahead. Go ahead. Yeah. Like, um, I. I don't think I ever had that switch that I hear a lot of students say that from when like playing games to making games and like echoing what the other two just said, I hear a lot of students say that, you know, it definitely changed their way of thinking. I was a very weird child <laughs> um, and I was very much into um, the community of like MMO games and things like that. And so from a very young age, I was running in-game events for fun or in-game or like magazines about the game or on forums or doing all those things. And so it very is still very foreshadowing of what I would do in the future. But um, I kind of always was tapped in, I guess, to that side of, of myself and of games. Um, even so far back as when I was very young and I was playing Webkins, I'd make entire worlds and country fairs for those stuffed animals with brochures and marketing materials and newspapers and the whole nine yards and so I think I was just always there but I, it's something that I really do hear a lot from students is how like um they never really truly appreciated just how hard it was to make a game um and they like you know would have a lot of opinions that have changed about certain games once I figured out how it was developed how long it took the the effort behind it and um like the limitations that games have Um, and I just like want to add on uh, to everyone's point here. Um, as I started 
making games, I realized um, when I do, when I have the time to play a game, um, I'm usually looking at how something is breaking, like broken down um, and how to implement that in any game that I make in the future. So for example, like, oh, that animation looks really good. How do I do that? Um, and I end up staying there for like a good hour until I crack the code on how to do that. And then, you know, continue playing the game. Um, but yeah, that, that's, that's all I really want to have. Awesome. So um, kind of a follow up to that is, um, I think all of you have been doing this for a few years at this point. So uh, have you found that learning about making games uh, or, um, you know, the community um, and, you know, all the different facets of it and also yourself working on it has changed the way that you understand not just games, but other things about the world and yourself? Um, <clears throat> for me, I realize how many like play elements there are in the world that you kind of just like kind of take for granted, uh, especially taking like um, game studies and games 101 here uh, kind of opens your eyes to like when you think of a game, you think of like, okay, a video game or a board game, but then like there's like play on top of that, which encompasses so much of our just like day to day activities when you do something in a joking manner for fun as, as again, playfully. Um, and it's like games are, again, play is like so much more encompassing than one realizes at first until you really go into like the history and like the, the history of games, history of just how human behavior is. And it's like, it's super fascinating um, how the mind is with play too. Yeah. Um, do you find that by like looking at the world with that lens, like that play lens that it, opens up uh, new ways of looking at it or, or like enriches it in some way? Um, I would say like, how do I phrase this? Like it's, it makes everything a little bit calmer, if that makes sense. Like we're always so stressed and so like, okay, this is my next goal. This is my next target of what I need to do next in life. But then I feel like being able to appreciate playing games kind of makes you just take a moment like, hey, let me just appreciate what's around me let me just take it take a moment relax let me enjoy myself and I don't think I'd be able to have really that same mentality if it weren't um like if it weren't for actually studying games let alone playing them um but yeah a, a little bit abstract message to convey but yeah a, definitely a different mindset with studying games Any anyone have a perspective on this they want to add it's like a it's like a big big cute question like you know how do you see the world now but um one of the cool things about games i think is is how like they kind of put you in a different uh mind state uh, while you play them but definitely when you're making them like steph you were talking about the spending an hour trying to like understand an animation of a character right um i mean that would that that's that's just it's like such a beautiful thing like you're looking at such a, a, a detail of something that you're passionate about um and then you you get deep into it and just kind of flow and and see how you get there um and i think that that's that's really nice that that gives you as a layer i guess to the way that we see the world and ourselves um so um for you guys that are currently i guess for everybody um and anybody can can answer this um you so okay, so you you came from um, your background. You explained a little bit of how you got the games, how you think about them, um, but then there's like the the day to day, the nitty gritty of it, right? So for you guys that that um, are in a, a games program or or have finished one, um, what is the best thing about going to college for games? Um, and yeah, so just, let's just start with that question. What's the best thing? What's your favorite thing about that? Um, I guess I could uh, take a shot at this one. So um, for me, the best thing about going into a, a game design program or when I was starting out is finding out uh, that there's so many like-minded people who just want to make games and having like a small community, even if it's just like a class or like even just like an after-school group, um, 
having that sort of energy to be able to produce something later on is really helpful and made me want to pursue this even more. Um, so that's the be the best thing for me. It's the people. The, the people who make the games um, are the best thing about it. I would say the same thing. I think like going into the game, like the game design program um, at my university, I didn't expect so many people to just like be making games. Like um, maybe they want to make games, but a lot of my classmates actually just like have a game that they're making on their own right now. And I think that was like very inspiring for me to see because I think that's something that I'm like, oh yeah, like someone can like be in the middle of like painting something or drawing something or writing like a piece of music. But um, there are just so many students just like making their own game right now or just like tinkering with like something that they've been trying to make. And it's just so like cool to see that you can just do that, honestly. Um, to add on to Lily and Stephanie, um, going to both Hostos and NYU, the community that the game design departments have is vastly different than the rest of the schools. Um, it, it just it's so hard to put into words, but it just feels so welcoming and just so inspiring from from again the rest of the school. You could have at Hostos, for example, um, there's typically like just a few classrooms that you ever go to, but like you always see the same familiar faces and you're always like happy to work with them and it's like you're almost in this own little bubble that's just part of the rest of the school and you just get this amazing community and same thing with NYU you have the game center and you have this amazing group of people who's like skilled creative and again inspiring and the vibe that that community creates just feels so different than when you go to like the Washington Square campus for example it's it's, it's very difficult to put into words but for sure, um, just the feeling of community that's created from working alongside people that are just as um, motivated to make games as you are. Um, so I, I kind of want to pick up on that thread because uh, you all, guys are all talking about people, right? And Kira, that's definitely in, in your wheelhouse. Um, and so when you, um, so for you, it's a, it's a passion of yours to like bring people together around games right um what do you think that um being in a college environment for that um how, how does that make it um different or better or uh, more interesting yeah so like i always tell people like yeah you can teach yourself anything on the internet these days right and a lot of people are questioning the value of like a college degree um but being in a college environment is much more than just like the classes that you're going to take. Um, it gives you like a support system, like everyone had touched on a little bit about like being with these like-minded people. Um, it also gives you accountability. If you're not a person that um, will constantly tell yourself, oh, I'm going to do this thing and then you never do it, college is really helpful because it gives you a set um, schedule of projects and things to complete. Um, and it gives you deadlines. <laughs> and so you come out with a portfolio. Um, I know a lot of people are like, oh, I'll just teach myself Maya on my own time over the summer. I won't take a class for it. And then a year later, I'm like, hey, so how's teaching yourself Maya going? And they're like, I didn't start yet. Um, and so it very much helps with that. Um, and then lastly is like networking. So in the industry, it's very much who you know is how you get jobs. And all of the people you're taking class with will eventually get jobs and you will know them. Um, but there's a huge like alumni, I guess, movement within games and people are very like proud to say, oh, I, I came from this school. And if they see an application that has their school on it, they'll be like, oh, this person also went to my school. Um, and it just makes it easier to get jobs in the industry just by having a university attached to your name. Um, and so I think there's many different types of benefits, whether it's just like the social benefit, the more, um, I guess, flashy benefit of, of, <laughs> of a name and things like that but also um you learn a lot more than just games in a games degree um and like liberal arts schools or even not going to college at all for games because I didn't go to college for games technically um I only had like one unity class in my undergrad degree um but I was taking all these other weird cool classes on like um manga and anime and like the history of like storytelling and dragons and all these cool things and you just kind of get exposed to a lot of things you might not have thought you'd be interested in um and it really it gives you time to kind of explore 
as well. You're not pressured to necessarily get a full-time job. You're not pr necessarily pressured to like have it all figured out yet. Cool. So, um, I, I also, so I, you know, that those are great answers. Uh, I, I want to ask you guys to like, um, there was a question in chat about if you, uh, what you guys want to kind of role you want to, or kind of company you want to work for. Um, I just want to, uh, we're going to talk about that for sure. It's coming. Uh, but before we get to the, the next steps, um, I also want to ask you guys, what's the, what's the thing that like, before you started going to college, um, be it games or um, in your case, you kind of put together a different program, right? For that fit you. So um, what was something that surprised you that you didn't think um, was going to be uh, in it? Um, uh, is it? Was there anything in particular that sort of like, oh, like I, 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 I thought going to, to college for games was going to be this. And then I, now I'm in it. It's like, whoa, that's, you know, totally different. I know, Lewis, that you have an answer to this question because we've talked about this before. <laughs> uh, I'm, tr I'm trying to recall. Uh, to be honest, like, I kind of went in with a very open mind because, like, I didn't know what to expect because um, as much as I hate to admit it, it was almost like a last-minute decision of what I would do. But knowing that, um, I had a feeling there would be some type of coding um, that was definitely present. Um, but also, like, having to practice with like art elements, which I also never worked with, but more so digital stuff. Um, so yeah, code, art, um, just design in general, whether it's UI, UX, like um, what Stephanie specializes in or um, level design or again, yeah, I don't know, it's just a mix of answers because it's hard to say. Um, I will say coming to NYU, a big surprise was 101 actually because of how expensive expansive it is on like the history of games and like taking games out of contexts and putting them in like other contexts and it just kind of really opens your mind to hey I thought I knew what games are in reality I knew little to nothing about them um I was going to uh, add to what Lewis was saying like, definitely, I think a lot of the things you learn in university will, like, expand what is, like, stuff you can find online. Um, so it'll be, like, a lot of, like, theory that you start talking about and, like, why games are the way they are that kind of becomes interesting. I think something else was that I think I felt a little worried going into um, the program thinking that I would need to be good at, like, every single thing or every part of game design, but because of how collaborative just the like whole program is in general, you end up kind of specializing in something that you're more interested in and learning to collaborate and communicate with people who are better at maybe like programming or better at narrative design, sound design. And so you don't actually have to worry so much about being great at those things, but rather just making sure that you know how to work with those people. Um, of course, there are classes. So if you want to learn how to do those things, then you can do it. But I think it's just like this idea that the pressure of being able to do it already kind of got lifted after being in the program for like a year. Um, there's some really great questions in chat uh, that I definitely want to uh, start uh, asking you guys. So um, there was a question, uh, like I said before, we're going to get to the next steps, but there was a question about taking classes and accessibility. Um, if if there are any classes that um, cover that in particular. I mean, I can speak about the hostess program and um, we don't have a class specifically on this, but it's infused throughout the, the program um, as um, something that is a concern and something that uh, designers and developers have to be aware of and design for, um, but we don't have a particular class on it. Um, um, for you guys that are at NYU, maybe, uh, I don't know if there is there any classes specifically that tackle accessibility or discuss it. Um, not that I know of. Maybe Kira knows more about that, but I do agree that like it's very intertwined with game design. Just like the idea of play testing a game, I think teaches you how to make your game more accessible to like a new player, but not just a new player, but to anyone that also could be part of your like target audience. 
Yeah, like I'm I'm not too well versed on the curriculum as much as I would like to be. Um, however, I know that they tend to have um rotating electives and um there's like this thing called class pitches. And so students, if they're specifically interested in something, can come and pitch and then we'll run it. And so I'm pretty sure we have had like a class just on accessibility in the past. Um, but like we don't run them like every single semester like that. Yeah, there's often also uh, developer talks that may focus on um, specific topics that will enlighten the, the, the student body and faculty. Um, this is obviously a growing um, thing. Game still still needs to improve, but it's getting a lot better. Um, but that was that was a great question. I thought I thought that maybe we could uh, discuss it too. Um, there was another question here that I actually had in in my list that I want to ask you guys, which is. Um, did you, when you chose this path, did you have to convince your family or did you face any resistance to to study games? And I'm if you had to convince the them, one out, what so. did you do? <laughs> <laughs> I'm probably the odd one out because I didn't. Um, but that's because my mom was a dance teacher for New York City Public Schools and my dad did IT. And so the arts were accepted. <laughs> um, and both my parents played games. <laughs> so oh that's awesome like the opposite of my family <laughs> <laughs> um I had the privilege of my parents well my father is an artist um and he does jewelry he designs jewelry and all that stuff um but when I talked to him about uh going into the game design major um since I was switching from dental hygiene to the game design major he was he ended up saying to me just get a degree it's fine just just get a degree. Um, so I was very lucky um, to have my parents be supportive of what I wanted to do and end up getting um, interesting. Uh, uh, I got an, uh, an internship, which was other possible games with Lewis as well, um, that same year that I switched to game design. Um, so I was, I was I was really lucky to, to be able to do my major. Oh, yeah, that that was uh, that was your first First, after your first semester, right? It was your first summer in, yep. in games, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, I'm I'm gonna put the link in chat. Uh, this uh, what Steph referred to, and there's a question about internships that I wanted to ask next. Um, was uh, a studio that we have um at Hostos. It's a student run uh studio, just for Hostos students. Um, and um, Steph was part of the the first cohort, uh, that did an internship over the summer. It's a paid internship and uh, just putting the link in chat um uh nyu folks the NY nyu game center has an incubator right and maybe a couple other things uh so maybe you can mention that Did, have you had any uh anything that you uh internship opportunities or anything through nyu or or, or just in general i mean i know lewis you obviously also did the same internship as Steph. so um so yeah so yeah what about what about um lily and kara um, I did have an internship last semester, um, or last this last summer, but it actually wasn't for games, though. I think the reason why I got the internship was because I had more of like gamified like thoughts or like more like an approach to like do things in a way that's like inducive to like play and things like that. Um, it was like a marketing slash like UI UX design internship and the um like problem was just trying to get people to use this app and so a lot of the ideas that came up were with were like gamified versions of getting people to like download an app um so I think even though it wasn't like a game design internship um like studying game design was something that they found very interesting and it helped me through that path um and that's actually like something I believe it's like us too they're like a company that is like trying to like they're like almost like a consulting company of sorts like they do um stuff for other companies and their approach is gamifying things and that's why people go to them so um half my job is to get nyu students internships so i have lots of things to say <laughs> um but when i was an undergrad i actually did three different internships um the first one i did had nothing to do with games at all. I was um, a programs internship for the Brooklyn Children's Museum. Um, and I was just like, well, it's in the art sector, you know, it's some, it's slightly somewhat related. And then my second one um, was 
a remote internship before those were normal. Um, and it was for a, a graphic design internship. So I'm like, okay, it's at least design related. We're getting a little closer. Um, but it was for a startup. Um, and it was a it was a weird startup dating app company where that matched you up based off of your fandoms. So if you like League of Legends and they like League of Legends, the algorithm would do its thing. And I'm like, okay, well, at least we're kind of within the culture. I don't know, but you know. Um, and then my third one was actually with Games for Change um, on their festival team. Um, and that one was kind of like the closest that I had gotten. And it was like exactly kind of what I wanted to do at that time because I had just finished um, the second year of running this convention that I had started with my school. Um, and I had like, that's kind of when I did like the complete transition over to, you know what, I don't want to make games anymore. I want to make events <laughs> and that sort of thing. And so I was very happy to get that. Awesome. Um, so there's a there's a quite a few questions about about internships. So I guess I'll, I'll just ask uh, you guys about like more where you're headed, um, not just where you are. Um, do you have a particular interest in um, uh, uh, like working in an indie um, space or working solo or going to a bigger company? Like what where do you guys see yourselves? Um, I feel like I am currently at the point where I need to be thinking about that. I'm a junior and I am really stuck. I think it's like this idea that like throughout this like last semester, we or the my previous semester, I spoke with like a lot of industry professionals and some of them are in the triple A company. Some of them are making games themselves or contract workers. And I think like the common line is this idea that if you work for a larger company, you're going to have a more stable income. That's also kind of questionable now that there have been like a lot of layoffs um, and like just like seeing what's going on in like larger um, companies. Um, I think like a lot of people wish that they could just make their own game. And that's like my own, like also like hope is that I can just work on my own game. And so the closest thing to that, I feel like is like indie games, indie game studios, where you can have a lot of your own ideas put into the final product, or you can contribute a lot of different things or try new things um, to get to like a game that you feel very passionate about rather than like you're working on a very specific system in a very um, large company. What about what about the rest of you? Do you have a particular focus in mind as far as where you want to head next? Um, to kind of add on to Lee, um, mostly agree with what she's saying. Like, um, ideally, like in a, a smaller company. I know, like some of my friends and I currently, we had um some of our final projects from last semester. We're already actually we spoke to one of our professors to actually try and get it published, and he kind of gave us some advisement of like um what we could do to like kind of finalize it and then start pitching it to publishers and stuff like that so that we can have one an actually published game which would be really awesome but like kind of have a really nice piece for portfolios where if we decide to like start um working at uh, indie companies we have we can show like hey look what we have like what like we do have some kind of experience but also like in the realm of like dreams of kind of like what if we kind of made our own company because we all have like similar ideas and similar kind of values of, of what we want to do with our games so indie studio but the dream is uh maybe even make our own studio i think i'm somewhere in between either triple a and then indie where it's just a mid-sized studio where there's just enough people but it won't feel like it's too small and uh, your project is not going to be, you know, anytime done. Um, I would like to do indie. Um, there's a bunch of people who want to make games and just need people to actually, you know, help make games. So there's, there's definitely more options to connect with people who want to make games like that. Triple um, A is a little harder only due to the fact that there's so many layoffs happening and um, you, have, you need to have a really strong portfolio, but of course you can always work towards that to, you know, get a spot in any triple A company. Um, but yeah, for me, it's a, it's a mid-sized studio, just, just a nice in between. <laughs> yeah. There's such a wide variety, right. Of like different sizes and configurations and, Carrie, you were, were you about to say something? Sorry. I was just saving myself for last since I'm not really interested in going into a studio. But um, and also I am, I would say, a little bit older 
than everybody else here. And I'm already in like the industry in my job for a while. And I love where I'm at and what I'm doing. <laughs> um, I really enjoy working with college students and that's like specifically where I wanted to be and where I am. And so I'm very happy where I am. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> so, um, so it's 7.45-ish. Uh, we have about 15 minutes left. I want to make sure that we cover a couple of other things that people have asked in here. And there are some questions that I definitely um, want to hear from you guys. But one of them that folks have asked that I, that I wanted to ask you um, is if you were to... Um, so, you know, most folks here are interested in, in being in games. Um, they're in high school or maybe middle school. What would you tell um, them that would be a good way to get started or if there's anything they can do to get prepared to go to college for games? Just do the thing. Um, it's a very, <laughs> it's a very simple thing, but like, um, I feel like a lot of people wait for permission to do things, whether it's from somebody else, their internal, you know, um, like monologue, whatever. Um, but if you want to make games, you just should start making games. Um, and they can be bad games. You can pump out a lot of hot garbage, but the only way you get better is by doing that a lot. <laughs> um, and so uh, whether it's teaching yourself on the internet or um, starting a game design club at your high school or like going to like, you know, the student challenge and various things, um, you don't need somebody to tell you that you're a game designer in order to be a game designer. Um, and you don't have to wait until you're in college and you don't have to wait until you get that internship or that job. Um, you don't need permission from Riot to say that you are a game designer. <laughs> That's all I'm gonna say um, on that. What do you, what do you guys think? Uh, if, if, I mean, I, I definitely agree. The best advice is just to make stuff, right? Like I saw Steph was like, nodding yeah. enthusiastically <laughs> yeah pretty much um because I when I entered college I didn't have any sort of knowledge of like how to make a game or how to use any engine um so I I think if I had to redo college again I think before that I would try and make my own stuff um there's a ton of engines that need little to no coding uh my personal favorite is twine um there's like you could just make nice narrative stories in them. They don't have to be too long. Uh, they could have branching paths, stuff like that. Um, and there's like, just searching on the internet, there's like a ton of stuff that you can look up to that don't necessarily need code, but they can teach you how to have, the, how to make a game feel good, if that makes sense. Um, and also just just making a lot of bad games is, is the way to go <laughs> because you'll get one good game. Um, yeah. Uh, so there was a question, and I'm typing um, uh, a little bit of an answer. So for, so it seems like most folks are like, yeah, just just start making stuff, right? And I think that, um, you know, I know, Lily, you you had a slightly different, I mean, I'm not sure if you had, I forget if you were like already making uh, anything related to games before your summer program, but you went to a summer program, right, for for games. And uh, so maybe you can talk about that, like that that's a uh, uh, particular path. Um, yeah, the summer program that I did, I actually only applied to it because I was like, oh, I need to do a summer program um, because my parents want me to do a summer program. And this one is like, oh, I could do art and I can do some like programming. So they'll be happy and I'll be happy. So that's why I applied to the game design program that Marcelo ran. But I think like actually being in that environment um, was something that I really like wanted to find in college um it was such a nice experience just being in a place where you have to think so much like a game designer um and I think like one like really important thing I learned from the summer camp was just that like it doesn't have to be a video game that you make like it can be just like um like it can be like an outdoor game it can be like a paper version of the game that you want to do like you don't need to do like programming necessarily to make like this game but like if you have like the vision or passion for it then you can start somewhere and maybe you can meet people along the way doing like game jams for example there's a lot of people online who are interested in making games and um I think it's actually like um that like joining things like discord communities um can be so helpful and like just meeting people who might be like really great programmers but maybe not great artists but you're a great artist and you guys can work together to like kind of 
think of something that you guys can make terrible together. Um, yeah, uh, I was also going to ask you guys if you participated in any game jams. I have. I've. 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 I've been in game jams. I've run game jams. I've done a lot of game jams, <laughs> um, and it really does help with that. I guess that imposter syndrome at the beginning, or that like fright moment you get about like being overwhelmed about making a game for the first time. Um, actually, with my students um, at EGD, at the very beginning in the first week, we forced them to make a game in forty eight hours, um, and all the freshmen get really scared, but they do it and they come out with games. Whereas when we didn't do that uh, and we gave them a whole month to do it, they would be like freaking out for, you know, 14 days. And then they'd start getting started a little bit. And then like they wouldn't even have anything working whatsoever. But we got much, we actually had working games when we only told them it was 48 hours because it gets you out of your head. Mm. Um, and, you know, everyone tries to make Final Fantasy 14 as their first game. <laughs> You can't make Final Fantasy 14, especially not in 48 hours, but people feel like, oh, you know, I have to make like my dream game the first the first time I make a game, which is not true. You should save that for when you actually have the skills to make your dream game. So <laughs> Yeah, and I, I I guess I realized that I just went into the game jam topic but, um without explaining much of what they are. So game jams is a an event similar to hackathons. Uh, where you can get together with a bunch of people uh, and make a game in a compressed amount of time. Sometimes it's 48 hours, it might be a week. Every game jam is different. Um, a, there's no requirement for knowing anything. There's no, uh, um, you don't have to be a game developer or anything. You just have to be a person that is interested in games. And you can join one either in person or virtual and just get together with a bunch of awesome people, make something, celebrate, learn. Um, that's, that's, there's so many different ways to get into it. Game gyms is one of them. Um, so uh, I want to ask you guys like one uh, or maybe one or two final questions, and then see if we have some other questions in the audience. Um, let me let me bring up my questions here because I there were so many good things that I kind of lost my my train of thought. Um, so. Um, First of all, um, I really so we've been talking about making stuff a lot, right? So, can you guys share something that you're excited about that you're working on, or you just finished, or you're about to start, uh, like a project? It can be games related; it doesn't have to be games related. Uh, for me, um, <clears throat> uh, there's a assignment I have for intro to game development. Um, how do I explain the prompt? Um, at the beginning of the semester, we had a uh, to choose four random words. And these words would be like uh, themes for games that we'd have to make throughout the semester. So we just finished our previous project and this time we have to make a multiplayer themed game about a specific word. So my word was too fast and using Game Maker Studio 2, um, I'm going to try to make like a, almost like a mini competitive temper run kind of thing uh, where there's um, obstacles that you and another player have to jump over and whoever can uh, like I guess survive the longest uh, would be able to win like a very simple uh, but fun kind of like mini game for two people to play with um, the reason I'm excited about it for in particular is because um, I was speaking to my professor and hoping that she could kind of introduce me a little bit to procedural generation which she told me she usually saves for intermediate game development but she said she'd help me uh, look into it because I don't know procedural generation was like super fascinating especially with games like No Man's Sky um, which I put a lot of hours into um, so be, being able to learn a skill like that is super exciting for me. Awesome. Um, I am um, also really excited about working on a game. I like just decided the begin. I think it was my like New Year's resolution just to make a game because I kind of feel like I do so many for like school assignments, but not enough for like myself, like just making a game. Um, and so that's actually part of why I'm like playing Persona 5. I think I realized I need to play a few more games before I like make this game, but um, I just finished like the character designs um, and I'm just starting programming. So I'm pretty excited about it. Am I allowed to say two things? Of course. <laughs> um, so for NYU, what I'm 
what I'm working on right now and what I'm most excited for is a uh, GDC. So the game developers conference in San Francisco. So as part of my job, I'm responsible for NYU's entire presence at the game developers conference. So our booth, our talks, our students showing games, the alumni event, all those things. And it's a whole week where everything is my, 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 my problem and my, and my thing. And I, I, I love doing that kind of stuff though. <laughs> um, and so I'm very excited. Um, I get to meet a lot of people out there, which is um, that I only get to meet you know, when I'm on that side of the country, which is fun. Um, and then my other thing is also events related. So um, I'm currently working on the seventh iteration of my convention that I started when I was an undergrad called Waffle Games um, that happens every April. Um, and it's completely free and it's aimed at um, students. Um, and we've had hundreds of speakers over the past few years come out, um, students to uh, indie developers showing their games, um, eSports tournaments, the whole nine yards. Um, and while we don't have a location for it yet, um, it's happening again in April. And so I'm excited. <laughs> I heard it might be a host of <laughs> It might be, it might be. <laughs> um, so yeah, um, so me and a couple of previous students are, uh, we're making our own game. Um, it's about this little red robot uh, just traveling the world. Um, and I am the background artist for the entire game. So that's going to keep me busy for <laughs> for a little bit. Um, and I'm hoping to work on my own game uh, with my partner. So that's, that's what I got. <laughs> awesome. Uh, everybody went, right? Yes. Uh, so with the, the last few minutes that we have last uh, that have left, uh, first of all, I want to ask the panelists to get ready a link to your portfolio if you want to share one or any things that you want to shout out. Um, but um, for folks that are in attendance, if you have one final question for the panelists, um, please, you know, this this is the time. <laughs> um, and I'll I'll see if I can pick out if if I we didn't cover anything. Um, so. Uh, I see you guys are like seriously looking at your screens and moving your hands. Hopefully, you're getting your link ready because I this is a big is a big thing. Like I want I want everybody to see your work because you make amazing stuff. Uh, but um, so let's see, let's see. Oh, <laughs> that's an interesting question by um somebody that um how do I reform reformulate this um. So if you're, um, so you guys are going to share your work um, and folks are going to see the amazing things that you did. Um, how much of that do you say is a combination of like skills that you learned on your own versus skills that you learned in college versus like what, like what was usually the process for, that you, that you, that you have when you're making something and you're having to figure out how to solve a problem or gain a new skill that you didn't have before? In other words, uh, maybe I'll rephrase the question a little bit. Because um, the question was, how do you get out of tutorial hell? Uh, <laughs> so the, the maybe the other question would be, um, how do you um, how do you use the resources that you have? Right, like be at school, your you know, the people that you uh, that you know, uh, but also obviously the internet. Um, I personally feel like a lot of my ideas come from just like seeing other people's games, work, art, designs on like Pinterest, social media, things that like I've played myself that I really enjoy. And if I do get really like fixated on something, um, oftentimes someone else has been fixated on it too. And so you can just search up like, how did this person make this or how to make something similar to this and someone has like a tutorial online. And so yes, you kind of start off in tutorial world but um, once you kind of like learn how you make it and the like how it was even started in the beginning, you can start thinking of how, like what was it that drew you to that and like what you want to do with this information that you've learned. It's kind of just like getting, um, building like your tool belt um, of sorts, I feel like. Uh, that's a good way to put it. Uh, for me, I feel like I've never left tutorial mode. Honestly, um, I'm always I'm always just learning new stuff that I would I didn't know like the week prior, and it's like 
it's super helpful both in the moment, but then in the future, rather than having to spend three hours researching something, I'm like, oh yeah, I remember I did it on this project in XYZ method, and then I can implement it really quick. So it's like, you're always building on, on top of previous knowledge that you had, but also like trying to problem solve on, on, on your own. Um, I know some of my friends, uh, well, not some of my friends, all of us kind of just struggle with coding and we're like, hey, did you, were you able to figure out this or how did you implement this? And then we kind of share and just work it out together. Um, yeah. Yeah. So basically utilize everything at your disposal, uh, continue to build your tool belt, um, work with the people around you to um, solve some of those questions. Um, so that's great. But so I uh, can you guys share right now? So for you guys in attendance, all these people are amazing. Uh, they make a, a incredible stuff. Um, so I want to I'm asking them to share their portfolio sites or whatever link they want to share. So you guys can go ahead and share right now in chat. Um, so please take a look at their work. Um, and um, would it be OK for uh, the panelists, if any attendees wanted to contact you and ask you questions or ask for advice, um, or who 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 would be available for that kind of stuff? Because I know you're all really busy too, so I don't want to assume. Um, I can you're... make time. Yeah, here as well. Yeah, shoot me a message. I'll <laughs> definitely answer. <laughs> so I'm also gonna I'm gonna post um my email um, in chat if you guys want to ask any questions and if you have a question for somebody that you heard speak today and you didn't figure out how to get them, get to them, I can always connect you too. So, all right, I think I think we're um, we're at time. Um, I think that this was great. There was a lot of amazing information, a lot of um, a lot of knowledge and a lot of like wisdom honestly like it's it's amazing because you know i mean i'm old um <laughs> so i always but I'm, i learned i've i've known you guys for a while i've learned so much from you and i i think i learned a lot today too um so hopefully this was useful to everybody um hope you uh got your questions answered like i said before if not you can always contact us games are people honestly that's what what who makes games, what games are for, right? So like you just met uh, some people here today that are not just great people in games, just great people in general. Um, and I think that that is a, maybe something that we forget sometimes is how like important it is to remember the games are people, not just information and skills and jobs and numbers. It's There's a lot of amazing people behind them. So um, I also think that the, the answers that you guys gave today kind of highlighted that too. Um, so, um, I hope you guys, um, had a great time. Thank you, Kira, Lily, Stephanie, and Lewis for being part of this. I hope I get to see you guys soon. Um, Steph, more likely you on campus. <laughs> um, <laughs> okay. Uh, yeah. Thanks everybody. Have Thank a great you. rest of your night. Thank you.